Hi there, and welcome to our second problem set. I'm going to walk through this with you today, and um, we're going to do the even problems. So let's start off with the, um, the second problem. We only have four problems overall, so just do two and four. So for problem number two, you look at it right here. You have which of the following statements can constitutes a scientific hypothesis? Uh, one, atoms are the smallest particles of matter that exist. And two, space is permeated with a substance that is undetectable. Um, think about what a uh, hypothesis has to be. And uh, for a hypothesis, one thing you need to have is that it, uh, it has to be testable. So of those two things, two statements right there, which one can be testable? Well, I think the first one could be testable. Um, you can see if there is something smaller than an atom, you can detect that. Uh, or if something is, nothing is smaller than an atom. So you could uh, prove that right or wrong, or sup you don't use the word prove, but you say support the hypothesis. Uh, <clears throat> or you could refute, refute the hypothesis with evidence. With number two, there's no way that you could ever have any evidence um, because it's undetectable. So, I mean, you could say that, you know, uh, invisible flying monkeys are going around uh, through space, and uh, there's no way you could ever detect them, even if, um, I don't know, there's just no way to detect them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, number one is the only hypothesis there. So let's go to number four. And by the way, number three is pretty tricky. Um, it's a question um, taken directly off a uh, problem set from MIT. Um, so it uses MIT geography. But you can still figure out what's going on there. Um, the best thing to do is just draw a vector diagram at the beginning. Um, figure out the position in which... Oh no, I, I think they use... Yeah, they use a uh, velocity for each leg of the trip. So you have to figure out the velocity. Sometimes it gives you clues to figure out the velocity, but you can do that. Okay, so let's look at number four. Four says, consider the two vectors in the, in the figure below, the magnitude of... Um, the absolute value of vector A is 2.88, and the vector A uh, makes a 33.7 degree angle with a positive x-axis. The magnitude of B, which is the absolute value of B, is uh, 3.44, and the vector B makes an angle of 35.5 with a positive x-axis uh, pointing down to the right, as shown in the figure below right so it goes down and to the right it goes below the x-axis it says find the x and y components of the vectors a and b now the reason i wanted to walk through this one is because it's bringing in some concepts of trigonometry that we might have covered by this time but probably not by the time you're going through this um and you might remember it you might not so it's good to review this and you, I mean, you could have gone in online and figured this out yourself, but um, I'm here to help you with that. So let's go through number four all together here. Um, let's see. So I'm just going to redraw this right here. I'm going to redraw the whole scenario. Even though I can see it right now, I think just redrawing it helps. So I'm going to redraw it right here. I'll draw vector A in blue. And here it is, like this. It's very big. And let's say that this angle right here, like they said, is 33.7 degrees. And let's make this a vector. And the length of this vector is 2.88. Um, that's the length. Now, this should make you think of a, uh, a triangle. <laughs> should make you think of a triangle. So let's uh, put the x values in red. So here's an x value right here. We want to find this leg. And we also want to find, um, so that'll be x. This is for A. Uh, and we want to find, let's use green. Spring green. Nice. Let's use that for Y. Let's go up there. That should be straight, but it's not. So that'll be the Y value. And this whole thing is, is a vector A. So this whole thing is vector A. That's this length right here. Okay. 
Um, so what's the x component and the y component of this vector? Because if you add the x and the y together, you're going to get this vector right here. Um, so we can use trig to figure this out. One thing I know is that the sine of any angle in a right triangle, and this is a right triangle, by the way, uh, is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Now we know the hypotenuse here is 2.88, and we know the angle right here, so all we need to do is find um, the opposite side, and that is our y right here, this value right here. This is our opposite side. So here's the opposite of this angle, and here's a hypotenuse of the angle. All right, so let's do this. Okay, so the sine of 33.7 point equals and it'll be the opposite which is well, we don't know what it is let's just use our y right there there it is y over whoops uh, our hypotenuse y over our hypotenuse which is 2.88 so if we want to solve for y here I'm going to multiply both sides by 2.88 sine of 33.7 and let's see what that is if you put that in your calculator you're gonna get you're gonna get 1.60 so that is our answer for the y component of the a vector that's our y component of vector a Okay, let's look at the x component. The x component, we can figure that one out with um, cosine. What's the x component here? All right, so it's going to be the cosine. We remember this from our trick. Cosine of any angle, that should be theta, equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So here, we have a cosine of the same angle. 33.7, and this equals um, our x value, I'll put that in a second, over 2.88. So here's the x value. x over that. So we multiply this out again, just like the other one right above it, to find our x. So it's going to be 2.88 times cosine of 33.7. And this gives you, if you put this in your calculator, you can figure this out. It turns out to be 2.4, 0. So that is our x component of the vector a. Right, so we did a. Now we got to do b. B is maybe a little bit trickier. Um, we're going to use uh, positive and negative to fully describe this, we're going to consider below the x-axis as being uh, a negative um, value. So let's draw out B. B, I'm going to put in a nice pink. Oh, it says strawberry. Looks pink to me. So here's B. I'm just drawing it down here. There's B. B, that's vector B. B's total magnitude is 3.44. That's the absolute value of its magnitude. Right. So we got to find the x value and we can find the y value. So I'll use the, the red again for the x. Whoops, that should be straight. And I'll use the green for the y. The spring for the y. That should be straight again, too. It's kind of hard to draw on this. Right. So let's do this. I'm not going to draw out the, the trig. Um, variables again. I'm just going to say that the oh, I forgot to say that this this right here, this angle, is a little bit different here. Um, instead of writing it down as 35.5, I'm going to write it down as negative 35.5 because when you go below the x-axis like this, um, we'll just count. We'll, we'll count this as zero, and we could go all count all the way around if you wanted to, um, 360 degrees, and then just subtract this if you'd like. Um, from 360 degrees and you get the same answer or you could just put in negative 35.5 and that'll fully describe where this angle is in space so let's do that let's make sure that it's a negative value um, so this y component here let's go through the y component again remember the sine um, of something uh, of the angle 
is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So let's do this. Let's do sine of negative 35.5 equals the y. Let's do y. y over uh, 34, 3.44, because that's our magnitude of b. So all I did was the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now I'm going to solve for that y. It's just going to be 3.44 times sine of negative 35.5. And this turns out to be negative 2. So our y component here is negative 2. Negative 2.00. This is our y component. Component of the vector b. Now, we want to do the x component. It's not the same length as uh, a up above here. b is a totally different vector, so you can't use the same x here, but use the same process here. And the fun thing about this, and yes, it's fun, is that it doesn't matter if you use a positive or negative value here. You're still going to get the same value for x. So let's do this. Let's check this out here. So for... Uh, or the cosine. So let's do cosine, cos of uh, negative 35.5. It doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. You can check that out yourself. Uh, all over 3.44. And our cosine is going to be our x over I, our hypotenuse. So our x over our hypotenuse here is going to be that x over that. Whoops. x over that hypotenuse. Uh, let's go back here, back to the magenta. So to find x, all you do is you do the same thing we've done over and over and over again. Uh, cos, negative 35, 5, OK. And so this will give us our value, which is 2.80. And that's our x component of the vector b. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that you don't need to write out the y component of vector a if you don't want to, or the x component of vector a if you don't want to. What you could do, what you could do here, um, let's say that you want to write, uh, since I'm in red right now, I'll just do this. We could say that a sub x of our vector, make sure I get that, equals 2.40. So that would be the same thing as saying this right here. You could also, for the y, let's just do that one. What would it be? Yeah, it's a sub y of our vector equals 1.60. This whoops, is the same as that. They're exactly the same. This is just a little bit quicker. But sometimes the y's get a little bit confusing. You can write this out, and you will not be wrong. Or you can write this if you want to be fast. Either one's fine. So anyway, this is the answer, the full answer to problem four. I hope you got this right, and I hope you remember your trig, because it's going to rear its ugly head over and over and over again whenever we do vectors. So thanks for watching, and uh, good luck on problem number one and problem number three. Okay.